Good morning, folks. We've got a lot of weather to hit today, yet another Solar Cycle 25 forecast, and top science news, starting with the sun today at spaceweathernews.com. Looking at the last day on our star, we see things getting a bit more active, while the coronal holes continue to turn through. Let's begin with the southeastern limb. Left side here, you should be able to easily see the filament release, first CME in a while. It is indeed helpful to see the interior core of the filament as well here in ionized helium, but had we not seen the other ionized iron view at larger scale before, it would be tough to declare its departure from the corona. The active region you've seen on those sequences still has no sunspots beneath it. It continues its rotation alone as you see here in ionized carbon and the continuum of elements, and also notice here how the coronal holes are just in the corona. There is no signature down at the photosphere. But speaking of those coronal holes, the northern opening is facing Earth as the departing opening on the south delivers its underwhelming solar wind. Easiest mark to pick out is the purple. Plasma speed on the rise, following a small density bump above that in orange, it is a weak stream, still below 500 kilometers per second, so geomagnetic conditions are still calm and quiet. Let's start the world events at a volcano, about which we just saw a study the one about plugging the vents and explosive eruptions. Mount Merapi heard the call apparently and decided to say hello. Well folks, when it's Chicago breaking a cold record, you can just stop there and move on to something else like the low that danced offshore, intensified, and continues affecting the eastern seaboard into this morning. The flood threat in southern Europe continues today and we can now identify yet another low moving in right behind this one. No break yet for this region, including the record flooded Venice we saw earlier in the week. Now, while we've been focused on the wildfires in Australia, they just saw another type of woe turn the sunshine coast into a winter scene. Hail came down hard and wasn't exactly pebble-sized either. Some motorists were very lucky out on the roads, and at this size we are again seeing these ice stones venturing into deadly size. Let's start the science on the sun. Solar Cycle 25 forecast number 10,000. Seriously though, it is yet another cycle, much like the one we've just had that is forecast here. The solar polar fields, I don't mind telling you, continue to indicate the exact same thing, expected to kick in over the next 12 months. But it is critical to remember that while the sun's magnetic energy still has some juice, the longer term forecast for the century is indeed for a return to grand solar minimum. The top link in your list today is to our official Grand Solar Minimum forecast and a bit on why it matters. Up next, we are looking at molecular clouds. The examination of their electromagnetic and plasma turbulence dominance continues with a protostellar core featured here in astronomy and astrophysics, wherein they map the fields associated with an almost baby star. It's getting there and well in the process, but most importantly here we can see the field alignments and even the pinch in where the star is eventually forming. Up next, we're once again going to the scientists looking for missing matter particles foreign to our modern understanding. They call them dark matter. Today, it's the half of the crowd looking for the smaller and ultralight particles, and unfortunately for them, their parameter space just got nuked. Running out of options here as well as the truth inches ever closer to realization that it's all just dusty plasma. This next one's gotta hurt. In Plasma Cosmology, the movie, we said it's like we're looking out into space through a kaleidoscope because of the dust and the electric fields. Well, our local stellar neighborhood is inside a dust cloud as well, and it turns out that it's playing tricks on astronomers in a big way. They say it's a large-scale magnetism of the structure causing their returns, meaning it's a magnetized, dusty electric plasma field. The lines, the crystal patterns, the waves, all coming with it. And now, just as our interstellar region isn't empty, neither is the solar system. The solar wind plasma permeates the heliosphere, along with dust and gases, and embedded within the field are the electromagnetic fields connecting the planets to the sun. These flux tubes deliver energy on regular intervals that bypass the magnetic fields of the individual planets, and in a new study, we are discovering that a key part of their character is parallel electric fields, which is a nice little nod for Alphane's double layers, and also they describe a squeezing potential of the flux connection that accelerates the plasma, much like if you put your thumb over half a hose nozzle. 
they do want to further investigate those accelerations and their earthly effects, which are critical aspects of solar climate forcing. But oh boy, that's another topic, isn't it? Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. Website members, we got both your weekly Fly on the Wall podcast and Deeper Look video number 92 on the year yesterday. Lots to watch if you haven't had the chance. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.